2018 Mercedes AMG GTR is it wicked? Damn straight, if there's one thing that's not in short supply at AMG, it's confidence. Tobias Mowers, Mercedes AMG's chairman and CEO, told us in no uncertain terms to compare the latest version of the brand sports car, the GTR, against the Porsche 911 GT3 RS. Our car is faster, he said. And when we asked where, the reply was as abrupt as it was unequivocal, everywhere. Of course, the 4.0-liter GT3 RS is, unfortunately, no longer an active concern, despite a few examples that remain on dealer lots, it exists only in the past tense. It's also considerably less powerful and hundreds of pounds lighter than the track-focused GTR. But those differences don't stop it from being one of the best track cars ever produced, possibly even the very best. These, then, are fighting words. Don't confuse the GTR as a GTS model with its boost cranked up. This is a comprehensive revision to make an already fast car even faster in every way. And it works. The full depth of the revamp became evident on our ride with five-time DTM champion Bernd Schneider around the Algarve International Circuit near Portimao, Portugal. A freakish blend of blind crests, off-camber torture turns, and vanishing braking zones, Portimao isn't the beginner's racetrack. But it's Schneider's unconventional technique that lets the car shine. Entering an off-camber 180-degree left, he smashes the brake pedal with his left foot. With the car riding for longitudinal grip, he cranks the wheel in a seemingly vain attempt to dive toward the apex. But, somehow, it works. Abs working overtime, and with his right foot still partially into the throttle to improve response, the GTR turns. As the apex nears, Schneider releases the brake and pins the throttle, relying on the GTR's advanced traction control to deliver toward to the ground. There is no subtlety here. No consideration is given to separating braking and steering inputs. Rather, this is a full commitment reliance on technology. And to do so requires stones. The GTR delivers the former. The latter are up to you. Schneider, who steps in only for high-level track development at AMG, reveals a level of progress we've not seen elsewhere. The left foot braking and brake, throttle overlap abilities baked into the GTR's powertrain and stability control calibration demonstrates that the team at AMG isn't just fooling around with track driving. They're seeking speed, convention be damned, revised V8. AMG is a long-time purveyor of excess horsepower, but its greatest strength still lies in its engines, however, here taking the form of a twin-turbocharged 4.0-liter V8. And 577 horsepower and 516 pounds to feet of torque, the GTR's dry sump power plant produces 74 horsepower and 37 pounds to feet of torque more than the GTS model. Boost, which increases from 17.4 to 19.6 pounds per square inch, is a big part of that equation. A drop in compression from 10.5 to 1 to 9.5 to 1 helps accommodate the boost increase. The two broad corner turbos housed in the engine's valley get bigger compressor wheels, and the cylinder head's exhaust ports are milled to improve flow. But the engine changes are just the beginning. The transmission remains the same base 6.7-speed dual-clutch automatic used in the GT and GTS models. It's a relatively compact transaxle that incorporates an electronically controlled limited slip differential and is located between the rear wheels. In the GTR, however, its ratios are altered, first gear is taller, seventh is shorter, and the final drive is shorter as well, changing to 3.88 to 1 versus the GTS's 3.67 to 1 ratio. The result overall is a taller first gear. The goal was that it could now be used in tight corners, and shorter ratios in 2nd through 7th. Stealing a trick from Porsche, AMG cuts fuel delivery while keeping the throttles open to avoid stalling the turbos when the driver lifts off the accelerator. The transmission bangs between gears with zero hesitation and satisfying popping sounds on downshifts. Lightweight tech considerable expenditure was made to lighten the GTR through the use of advanced materials. 
However, the addition of proprietary hardware such as movable aerodynamic elements and rear wheel steering diminished the net reduction to a claimed 33 pounds. Expect the GTR to hit the scales at about 3,650 pounds, not light for a car towing the line with the best from touch. It's not for lack of effort. The roof, rear wing, which is manually adjustable, automatic front splitter, rear diffuser, and front fenders are carbon fiber, as are three underbody braces. The Tawar tube connecting the engine and transaxle is a one-piece carbon fiber unit that saves 17.6 pounds over the aluminum part in the GTS. Carbon ceramic brake rotors, 15.8 inches front, 14.2 inches rear, with six piston front calipers are optional. Flaps in the lower grille automatically open and close to alter cooling and change the GTR's aero profile but also add weight, cost, and complexity. Even so, at 124 miles per hour, there is neither aerodynamic lift nor downforce in front, and the car produces 110 pounds of downforce on the rear axle. High-speed stability, which eases the driving task, was a key goal according to mowers. Those carbon front fenders accommodate a 1.8-inch wider front track while the rear increases 2.3 inches. Forged wheels increase 1 inch in width relative to the GTS, 19 by 10 inches in front, 20 by 12 at the rear. Confirming its status as a track special are Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires. The same rubber available on the Chevrolet Corvette Z06, although in both cases this French rubber is custom tuned to its application. Tune it yourself adjustability is a key component of the GTR's personality. Height adjustable coil over springs at every corner allow for ride height tweaks and chassis balancing should GTR owners be so ambitious. Inside, the chassis and powertrain response can be altered using five drive modes individual, comfort, sport, sport plus, and race. Separate buttons for the dampers, two settings, exhaust, manual gear change lockout, and stability control allow fine tuning even within a particular mode. The addition of a 9 position knob in the center of the dash to manage the traction control system is the most important tunability change from the GT and GTS models. Our hour or so of seat time was as marred by unfamiliarity with the track as it was by jet lag. Even so, several observations are clear. Otherworldly braking is the GTR's greatest asset. Not just braking, but braking while turning, the technique Schneider demonstrated and endorses his fastest. The addition of rear wheel steering, which works in step with a quicker ratio rack up front relieves the front tires of some of the turning work at a time when they most need it, during heavy braking. Below 62 miles per hour, the rear wheels turn opposite the fronts, and above that speed, they turn in the same direction. A new calibration for the electronically controlled differential aids in controlling yaw during heavy braking, and the stability control system is online during deceleration, even when you've switched it off. It's not. However, an aggressive buzzkill, the adjustable traction control, activated by switching off the stability control, lacks the elegance of other systems. It mitigates unintended oversteer well, but its abrupt correction of even modest slip angles sometimes interrupts the flow of a well-executed corner exit. We never tried its least intrusive setting, however, so a final verdict will have to wait. Chevy's performance traction management offers similar control but with subtler intervention, allowing the tail to slightly step out before discreetly reeling it back in. The GTR goes on sale in mid-2017. By then, the 911 GT3 RS will have further receded into the memory banks, and attention is likely to be focused on the 2018 Corvette Stingray ZR1, which is currently sprouting wings and spy photos. That's probably where mowers should aim his targeting radicals. That the GTR will prove itself to be among the world's quickest track cars isn't really in question. Speed, however, isn't the sole measure of a great driver's car. Driving fulfillment is a product of many factors, some tangible, some not. Control ranks high on our list, though, and the GTR offers a level we've not experienced elsewhere. Its size and weight are undeniable downsides. 
and its driving position, which is close to the rear axle, amplifies every degree of slip angle, making it feel even bigger than it actually is. But being big often goes hand in hand with being bold, undeniably a character trait of this most special of AMG.